like person, that human, this is a human music podcast. So you got to bring the human oh, element yeah. in. And a lot of times it's like human interacting with environment creates the sound and the music. Playing songs, a lot of the music that I write is like written in a more traditional sense of like writing choruses and verses and choruses and getting like a groove and like a foundation. And my, my partner that I rap with in the flow mads, we talk about like that for like a lot of songs up until the electronic music production came around, like the, the test of a song wasn't like the actual recording or master of that song. It was like, how good is a song that like other people can remember and play this song it's like the song is the song. It's not the, the one master recording of that song. You know, like everyone can remember all these Beatles songs or all these like really, really classic um, songs um, throughout history because they're just a combination of these patterns that are so beautiful together. And, Amen. Um, That's and, something yeah. that, that I had to really kind of unlearn and then relearn, unlearn my bad habits and, and relearn that, that piece of philosophy that the song is not made of its production. The song is the parts that the listener can hum later while it's stuck in their head and, or, or repeat the lyrics, the melody, the cadence, like those parts make it the song. And then you can have that song be covered by somebody else. A different artist can take those pieces rearrange all the music around it and it's still that song right yeah it's like you can completely transform it and people will still recognize that song underneath of what it is so that's uh, what that's what we trying to write we're trying to write classics that are songs that you're just like you know that song through and through no matter what based on those those that core like thread of um continuity of something about it you know but that, I, was, I think I brought that up because uh, you were uh, talking about playing the guitar and how I just feel like, man, like actually playing something, playing on keys, playing like a percussion, using your voice as an instrument, playing guitar, it's different because it's challenging to your, to your body, but at the same time, like rewarding, you're getting the feedback. And I think that that's, super super important and bringing that into your production like all the time i'm like using my voice to create like the idea like i know a lot of times i'm gonna forget an idea if i don't just lay it down so i have like the voice recorder and i'm just like okay i'm gonna have the baseline like like notable songs like i think um luke you know you you talked about my song got that fire and like that's the song where i yeah. i i hummed i hummed the bass line i was like huh and i was like and then when i went in i just figured out the notes that i had laid down on a, like a vocal recording for it and something about like just letting that come out right when i was making it made it um exactly what it needed to be rather than like later on and just like cool sound and then figuring out a little and active active is what it what I would call it active music production where you sort of playing stuff. Sir, we got a bit cut out there. Yeah, you, you broke up just a little bit in there. So you were saying um, you know, you had the bass line that you hummed out and then you and then you went and figured it out and what what was it from there? Uh, yeah, it was just, just what it needed to be because just in the moment using whatever resource as like, as your instrument, I just think like actively having, uh, like an instrumental thing happening, even if you're just tapping, like tapping a pattern or whatever and bringing, bringing that like person, that human, this is a human music podcast. So you got to bring the human oh, yeah. element in. And a lot of times it's like human interacting with environment creates the sound and the music, you know, and it's hard. A lot of times that's difficult to translate in electronic music because we spend so, so much time on the details instead of like, you know, where would this, did this come from? Well, this came from the idea inside my head that was like, I was whistling or something yeah. or playing on the guitar. Like I just played something, it sounded beautiful and then it just rolled. It's so true. And 
a lot of beginning producers kind of have this fear that like, well, I can't really play anything on the piano. So I just don't want to use that at all to try and benefit. Dude, if you can't play the melody on the piano, that is perfectly fine. You don't ha- even if you don't even have a MIDI controller or keyboard or anything, play the rhythm on a keyboard key and just move the notes to where the melody is supposed to be. That rhythm that you just tapping out on the keyboard key, give it give it 10 tries, take your favorite, just the minute little differences in timing of you tapping it on your keyboard is going to end up with such a more human piece that connects with people. It's no longer just MIDI notes perfectly on grid. It sounds like a robot tried to synthesize the idea that you had. It is now there's the human element and that it just instantly connects with people so much better. That is such a huge gem, bro. And I think, too, if they made that mindset shift and cherished the skill level that they are at and recognize that they will only ever have this perspective in this moment, like you'll get better technically, but it doesn't always mean the shit you're going to write is going to be better. And sometimes you knowing how to play three notes right now, you can make something more meaningful than knowing how to play 60 notes a minute or a second or whatever in the future. Like I revisit some of my old stuff and I see how much I've almost boxed myself in, in certain aspects of my production, you know? So just changing that mindset and and doing whatever you can, like that's going to yield results. You're going to be looking back on for years. And even like one, one more level macro, like, it's really easy for everyone out there listening to be like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I should do that more. And then when you're writing, that fear creeps in and you don't do it because you're Mm -hmm. unsure of what the result might be. It's important to understand and realize in the moment that that is actually what's happening. A lot, like I've said on this podcast before, like the thing that takes me the most time is just figuring out that, the genesis, like the best part of that song. And if you, if you are continuing to struggle on the same thing that you think is almost, almost there, and you're not breaking out of that pattern of trying the same thing, but different, you're never going to get that thing. That's great. You get the thing that's great by realizing, Oh my, I'm stuck in a rut. This is, I've tried three different versions of this. It's not working. I have to realize that I'm beating my head against a wall and then be like, okay, that's all that was happening. Let me try something different. It's so hard in the moment to accept those types of things for what they are, but it's so important once you realize that when you're like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tap it on my keyboard because I don't know. I don't really, I don't usually do that. So I'm not, I'm just not going to do that. Like realizing that that is yourself getting in the way. Like just being able to like get to the conclusion that like, oh wait, no, I should definitely try that. What's the worst thing that can happen? I'm not gonna use it? Great, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's so so hard to have that awareness in the moment when you're producing. It's because that's what we do, we self-sabotage. It's just classic humanity at play. Yeah. We're like, well, we're, we're very, we're very critical when, when we're people who like have a high level of uh, critic, not critic. I'm trying to think of the word for high level for whatever, you know, music we listen to and we really like, and then we compare it to what we're making. We're super critical. And we're like, well, this is not up to par. So I might as well not do it is what mm-hmm. then, but if essentially you got to convince you got to not listen to that voice in your head. You have to listen to the original voice, which is the kid inside of you saying, ah, go for it. This looks like fun. Just do the thing that like that nobody, like nobody cares about the outcome of it. Do it because it's fun and it's right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's when, and then you'll find out, I think we've all, we've all found out that that's where the best, um, the best little gems and the best, like, the nuggets and you know the best parts of songs are generated 
the most beautiful ideas are in those moments of like actual release, not attached to any sort of outcome or because uh, that's that's like that's all ego saying, oh, I'm not good enough. Like ego is both ways. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm this and I'm better and I'm that. But it's also ego is like, I'm not good enough. I'm a victim, whatever. But mm. honestly, it's like, no, no. It's plenty good enough. It's exactly what it needs to be right now to just tap tap it out on the keyboard. I love that idea. I want to try that where I just take one note and just hit the pattern and then change the notes on the MIDI editor into yeah. a melody. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. But um, yeah, and it wouldn't happen if you weren't just like just a kid, just ready to like try anything uh, for the sake of trying. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, amen. I could see that working super well, like one with melodies like we've been talking about, but also like when, you know, say, you know, the mud pie method where you get all this crazy sound design sample of randomness, happy accidents, you pick your favorite moments and then you like listen to your drum pattern and just tap out the pattern of when whatever bass wub wob or wiggle might happen to happen be like oh it's gonna go and then you're like okay cool now let me audition between all of these different slices i have in the sampler or in the drum rack like where oh maybe it's this one maybe it's that one oh no it's definitely that one that's that one okay move on to the second one and move it up and down the piano roll and figure out where does this hit best. I like it. What's up, humans? It's Luke, your friendly neighborhood trap Jesus. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We appreciate you. Remember to like and subscribe to our channels. And if you have any questions or topics that we need to cover on the show, put them in the comments. Appreciate you. Peace and peace among worlds.